speaking of the Barry Bonds season, yeah. uh, there's the going to be a Barry Bonds documentary. Yeah, HBO. The, you know, what the are, un- it's untitled. Here's, mm-hmm. here's what they got. The untitled work, HBO sports documentary title. will tell the story of Barry Bonds, baseball single season and all-time home run king from his... Be- this sounds like an ad read. It's really not. Uh, I just obviously fucking love Barry, and so does uh, Dallas. Uh, I don't know how Jay Hay feels about him. Um, from his humble I beginnings do. as the son of all-star Bobby Bonds and godson of the iconic Willie Mays, all the way up to his meteoric rise in the 1990s and 2000s, using archival footage and original interviews, the film will chronicle Bonds' emergence as one of the game's most talented all-around players with the Pittsburgh Pirates and San Francisco Giants, and then his years as a superstar with the Giants when he rewrote the record book in his late 30s amid controversy. All throughout Bonds' path uh, to the doorstep of the Hall of Fame was an epic saga of sports, society, and culture in America. I think I read somewhere that uh, they're still working on it and they want him to participate, but that bridge hasn't been crossed yet. Yeah. There... uh, Again, I, I go back to the because um, I mean, I go back to this one IG live that I think is still probably up. I would think it's up anyway. The tour um, of his house. Yeah. You remember me talking to you guys about that? Yeah, I popped in it. Oh, did, did, did I did I tell you to jump on it or did you yes. just see it? No, yeah. you so, texted me and you're like, you might want to get yeah. in this. Yeah. And and it was like and I have I still to this day have no problem saying it like it was one of the most revelatory sit down slash interviews slash just hangouts whatever that in public like that Barry has ever done ever done answered questions about you know why he's not going to or why he doesn't even fuck with the Hall of Fame conversation and like the answer to that was very like look I'm not even I'm not really going to answer that and here's why. Because things get shaped however you want to hear them, regardless of how people say them. And I've lived through that. So I'm not just, I'm just not going to set myself up for that, especially around the conversation that you want to have. I'm just not going to do that. So think what you want, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, even that, even the way he said it, the tone was, was a little more revealing. You could almost hear like if, if broached correctly. Or the way that he deems to be correctly, which, hey, I, I feel like the guy, he, he has that or deserves that much. Um, th- then maybe I can give you what I have, what I know, what I feel, and my perspective. If I have the trust that it's going to be distributed as such. Now, I'm not talking, you know, like you've heard critics talk about The Last Dance and, well, it's because Michael Jordan had his hands on the production. Why do you think he came out looking the way he did? Blah, blah, blah. Well, I also like to think it's because it's Michael fucking Jordan. Okay. That's mm. right. Um, and I feel the same way about Barry that I do about Michael. Um, I'm, I'm so pumped for this. I just, I do. I hope that somewhere Barry finds a level of comfort that he's able to share and just speak on the stuff that he has really wanted to for so long. And I think that even then, even given the opportunity to do so, he's probably going to let sleeping dogs lie and, you know, give you the the rough edges of it. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I 100% agree with everything that you just said. The, the way that they described it in the release is the filmmakers will include a diverse cast of influential figures from Barry Bonds' life and career and the opportunity for Bonds to actively participate and share his firsthand experiences remains available. So he's currently not associated with, affiliated with the project. They want him to be, but like if they've already started creating it and he's aware of it, don't you think that there's a chance, or the, the likelihood is that he's not going to participate? Yeah, because... <clears throat> it's already a feeling of, okay, well, you guys have already kind of got this ball rolling. You guys have already started to tell the story you want to tell. Yeah, you have and, a narrative you want, right. you would like to get across. Mm-hmm. And so me sitting down with you incrementally, or maybe just one long time or a couple long times at this point, I don't know that I trust how that turns out. Mm. 
you know, and, and he could have uh, X amount of creative control where he says, look, if you guys are willing to do it this way, I can give you what I want. I can give you what I have. And then you can take that to production. And you can also create a parallel production where you don't have any of what I'm going to give you. And then I can watch your final production cut of what it looks like with me involved. And if I like that, if I'm okay with that, then we're good to go. Like that's probably not going to happen. I don't know that the creative liberties will be extended to that level for him where somebody, because there's a certain level of integrity for the film producer, right? And the directors that, that has to come through in their work as well. You have to respect that, that they have a, that's right, story they want to tell. And that's what Barry has understood the whole time is I know that you have a story you want to tell and a way that you want it to come off and a way that you want people to view it. So mm-hmm. I think like any of us, <clears throat> unless that aligns with how I would like to be viewed publicly, I don't know that I'm just going to sign off on you putting some shit together and me not really having an idea of how it looks at the very end. Because we're talking about, in my opinion, the single greatest legacy in sport that will be under the microscope forever when it comes to justified in terms of performance and production, being in the hollowed sacred ground of the Hall of Fame, and then all of the surrounding noise around it and the impact that has had on him not being in the Hall of Fame. Like, they're just, this is the, for me, the clear cut, like, we have to make a decision on what this means to us and then we can move forward. That hasn't happened yet. I'd like for this documentary to assist in that, but I don't know. Jay, hey, what, what, as a baseball fan, what do you hope to see or just get from a Barry Bonds HBO documentary? I wanted to ask that question to all of us. Like, what is the one thing you want to get out of this? I'm a little conflicted on whether his participation is important for me watching this because I, on one hand, a, a, a signature Bonds documentary with zero Barry Bonds involvement feels incomplete. Um, yes. On the other hand, I don't necessarily want Bonds dictating like the content and what we're allowed to see necessarily because I do think that can that obviously brings a bias and I think that was true with the last dance for sure even though the last dance was entertaining. Um so I I don't know I <clears throat> I unfortunately the more you dig into Barry Bonds the person and the off the field stuff the less appealing he becomes i think so i'm not really interested in that sort of stuff i would be interested as as a person i guess my short answer is as a person who lived through barry bonds's peak and got to experience all of that on the field i would just enjoy a walk down memory lane of the signature moments leading up to not only the single season record but the career record because i i lived that in real time i watched those in real time and that that's like the the sentimental part of my baseball fandom. That's what I would want. Mm. Joseph. Yeah, I mean there that's the thing about Barry Bonds if you want <laughs> I can see why he wouldn't want to do this when you talk about like what narrative you want to push cuz if you want to make Barry Bonds look like a bad guy, it's pretty easy. Like and there's like a lot of shit on him that like I feel like most people don't think of. It's like almost when you think of Barry Bonds and controversy, you think of steroids when it's just like that is barely anything compared to like all this shit that he hasn't really addressed. And then, or he has, I don't really know, but even the steroid shit, like he got indicted for perjury for lying, allegedly about doing steroids in Congress. Like he cannot talk about it at all. Mm -hmm. So like even them asking about steroids is just going to make him look bad no matter what, because he literally can't say shit or he could go to prison. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I think that's the case with like a lot of these guys, but people don't understand. But there's just, yeah, there's, I would love him to be in it for sure. Just because there's so many, so many like moments and little beefs with him and Leland, like get his perspective Thank on the you. Leland shit, that just so Kent good. shit mm-hmm. and like all the stuff and just all the hate and, and like him explaining his perspective and how he handled it. 
like when he was getting in trouble and he did an interview and brought his son to do an interview to make him look better and, and left on crutches. There's just like a lot of, yeah, the Barry Bonds story is very, very interesting. I mean, I made a video on it and obviously I don't think I could, you know, dive as deep as like a full length documentary, but there's so many, like if we're making that video a lot, of, I kept thinking that like, I would love to see what Barry Bonds really thinks about this today. Because I'm sure when it happened, he had to be like, yo, but you but know, like, so like think about, but, but like that interview that you're talking about with his son, like, again, perspective, like he was, and that was the first time that I think we were really seeing publicly. And it might be one of the early examples of like the, the frenzy that was to come with social media. When people start to start to smell blood or taste blood, they latch onto something. Because remember, we watched our country, we watched our government start to use performance enhancing drugs as a viable platform for them to run for office on, right? Because who doesn't want to get rid of steroids in high school competition? Who doesn't want to take care of our youth and keep this out of the hands of our student athletes? Blah, blah, blah. You're you're not gonna you're not gonna tell anyone to get off their soapbox when it comes to something like that. And why did it become that public facing? Because of what you just said, Joe. Like there were like extreme legal ramifications surrounding him and what was going on in the sport at that time. And it transcended sport and it went to pop culture. It went to the world. And that, yeah, those are those are things that I think about, and I would love to hear his perspective just on that. Like, hey, do you remember doing that interview with your son where you were explaining to people that it's starting to affect your family and blah, blah, blah? Do you remember that? Take that moment now, and let's fast forward. What do you think it would have been like with social media, and do you see any sort of you know parallels between that experience and what's happening now in this day and age with social media? You know, but for me, do you know, do you realize how cool it is to have like some of the baseball families that we have in this game, right? Like, like it, it's so special because it, it carries the history of our game literally through physical DNA of families. And Bobby Bonds was no fucking slouch. Okay. No slouch at all. And to have his son grow up with the tutelage of himself and a guy by the name of Willie Mays, like watching what, what a kid with that kind of instruction and impression turns into, like we know what that looks like. It's Barry fucking Bonds. It's Barry Bonds. So could you imagine like taking stock of all of that, the growth of who he becomes? Right. And to your point, the Leland breakdown, the Leland tirade that happens out in the outfield during spring training. Um, I mean, that's phenomenal, phenomenal stuff, because that's Barry long before any of the any of the clouds that may may orbit him today. I want all of that. I want all of that. Like this was a dude who burst onto the scene with his power and athleticism. And people were like, oh. Oh my God, like this dude, this is the fucking real deal. This is 30 30. Like, this is damn. Okay. And then just continued, continued to tear apart the baseball world with his production, growing into what we now know, growing into what we, I think at times, what we celebrate and what other people turn their nose at. But either way, this is something I think everybody would want to see. I, I mean, I don't know why, like, if it got announced now, but they're still trying to get Barry involved and he's not, wouldn't that lead you to believe that we're not going to see it anytime soon? Uh, well, or it could lead me to believe that they're <laughs> near the end of production and they're like, look, this is where we're at. All right. We would love to be able to, to piece this together and put you in here. But if we're not, we're prepared to move on. <laughs> It's just tough though, bro, because it's like I, as Barry Bonds, you probably don't want to talk about certain shit, but it's tough to make a documentary about Barry Bonds and ask him stuff without it like kind of seeming like a hit piece. 
because there's just so much shit mm -hmm. to ask about. And it's like, why are you asking me about this? But it's like, are we just going to ignore this and just talk about how many like home runs you hit? And that's cool. But like, once you look into it, to me at least, like that's not even the most interesting part, even close. Just all no. the crazy shit that went down mm -hmm. through his career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. For me, I don't know what I want out of it. Like I <clears throat> it's almost that I am or I would be more interested in a dramatized movie about Barry Bonds's life than a documentary, because to Dallas's point, they're going to want to tell a story. Uh, I don't gun to my head. I don't think Barry is going to want to participate in this i don't think that he'll end up contributing especially it's like oh if you want to if you want to talk about the the hall of fame career sure but if you want to get into like my personal life like i'm probably not gonna want to sign off on that or <laughs> or be a part of that um so it's almost like if you if you want to get the full scope of everything the baseball and the man it's gonna have to be a a, a, a not a fictional but a dramatized hollywood story and yeah Based on yeah. actual events. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm sure that even like a movie coming out, like he would have to come out and say, well, that's not how it went down. Like, they're, they're, you're never going to get the full scope yeah. of how I'm it here went for, down. I'm here for Michael B. Jordan doing seven cycles and just <laughs> fucking blasting baseballs into the bay. <laughs> yeah. The Barry Bonds movie. I mean, I've, I've said that this year. I said it's, it's been a while since we've had a good baseball movie. And I think there's a lot of I'm not going to I'm not going to name names because people will say that it's blasphemous. There's a lot of corny ass baseball movies. We need a fucking good, badass baseball movie. And I feel like any time that they, they try to make baseball movies, they're made by non baseball people. Mm -hmm. It's always like, oh, man, I have to like. I have to study you know this player. I have to like look at baseball players. Like, like I want a, I want a baseball movie done right. And I feel like that we Barry Bonds movie would be one. Another one that I've talked about a bunch of times is uh, I know that he's another controversial figure, but uh, the Yasiel Puig life story. You don't even have to like make it the Yasiel Puig story. You could just use his story as the basis for a fiction based story of a Cuban born player who gets smuggled to the United States to play in major league baseball and all the behind the scenes bullshit that goes along with that. The story of like having the appreciation for a player that actually comes over that way and how it, it's not just about getting from point A to point B that shit follows you for the rest of your life. Basically uh, that would be a good one. But yeah, no, those are, th those are the like, have, uh, Oh God, what is the name of a, uh... I think it's bad hombres. Have you seen that? Mm -mm. It's it's a pretty cool documentary. It's about a, um, it's about uh, like a semi pro team that travels across the border, the California Mexico border, to to play baseball, and just like you know, like what goes on and you know the details of that. It's it's pretty cool. Mm. Um, I mean, it's nothing like <clears throat> immigrating from Cuba to the united states mm -hmm. like a like a story of defection that that's that's incredibly moving that's about as baseball well. as it gets yeah like we need what 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 we need is baseball needs its version of any given sunday there's no baseball version of any given sunday mm -hmm. and that's what we need like the most non colorful like hard hitting, if you will, like that, that is probably still Bull Durham, but Bull Durham is colorful. Bull Durham is, you know, like, like lighthearted in a sense. I mean, it, it depicts minor league baseball life. And I, I think for the first time now, because of what's happened over the last two years with minor league player compensation and accommodations, it's now starting to grow farther away from what it's like, but still very reminiscent of what minor league baseball life is like. But to have just the like the nitty gritty shit that's going down in the clubhouse, you know, like that just isn't there. It just mm. hasn't it hasn't happened. 